evening, everyone. I apologise for being late. And please just bear with me, because you've got just me tonight. Um, I haven't got anyone else. So I'm just here on my own, and I'm here to give you an on my own, and I'm here to give you an update on everything that's going on. And obviously, the most exciting thing to the raffle for this very beautiful quilt that has been handmade by Diane in Teddy Bear's colours. Hannes has obviously heard that we're live. He's there in the background. Now, as I say, you're gonna to have to bear with me a little bit because oh. I'm just so excited. But first of all, you know, I, I'd like to welcome all of you back, you know, whether you're joining me live or joining me later. Um, welcome to the roller coaster of Greenbank Farm. I'm not going to deny that there's been quite a few tears shed this week, but I'm not here to spread doom and gloom for you. Um, that's not why I'm here. So no matter what life throws our way, we'll always find a way to move forward and focus on all the positives because there are many, many of those to be thankful for. I want to really start by um, giving you a summary of the week and it started with lots of positives. First of all, the fact that our little ray of sunlight holster um, is, is back in town. So she was back, safely back from her holly bobs in Croatia and she always brings a wonderful energy to the farm along with her very wicked sense of humour. I whisked her off to Penrith with me on Monday with Angel Eyes and Pepper, Mabel. And if you've not managed to catch up with their news on YouTube or behind the scenes, I can tell you that the news was all good. Mabel's fractured pedal bone has healed really well. Sam took more x-rays and Chris Dixon at Vet Vision was delighted with how Hannes's eye was looking. And we've decided that it's best not to put him through any further surgery at this time. You can see he's quite happy back there. Now, given that a year ago his life was hanging in the balance, here we are against all the odds with him continuing to live a happy and comfortable life. And that's all thanks to you and his huge following. Wednesday was a long day for me, Frey, Nero and Bear. It was a four hour drive across to Yorkshire and Rainbow Equine. And I know that for our American and Canadian followers, that's not a long trip but the roads in the UK are a little more challenging, so it's a bit of a bigger deal over here. Um, just bear with me a second, because um, we, have, we have somebody who's come to, come to join me. Are you going to come in? Yes. Yeah? I was walking around the barn looking for you. <laughs> so, Bailey, who's also had a fun week, is, um, what were you doing this week? Performing in Matilda, oh, yeah. did you forget that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You can help me. So Bailey's um, kindly agreed to help me with the random.org once we get on to doing the raffle. Yes. So thank you for gracing us with your presence. It was my pleasure. Oh, thanks. You say all the right things. Yeah, no, I do. If you want to go in and chat to Hannes at any point, if you get bored of what I'm saying, then feel free. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, we ha we'll have to tell tomorrow that she'll be out of a job. Yeah. Um, what I am going to say as well is I know that there's uh, a number of comments coming up. Ruthless B, hi, Louise, Carla, Nancy, Inika, George, Jane. Jane, thank you again so much for going to see the boys today. I'm just looking down at the screen here. Um, I'm not going to go through everything now, um, but any questions that you've got, you know, feel free to, to pop them up, up on, on there, on the screen, and um, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but, you know, going back to, to Wednesday, um, we left the boys at, at Rainbow Equine. They were very settled, they were happy, um, blissfully unaware of what lay ahead for the pair of them the following day. Um, also on Wednesday, um, 
I was quite anxious for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons was the Fenway Foundation, who I admire so much, and I have done for many years because of the work they do for the breed. They released their latest Frisian Advocate podcast, which happened to be an interview they did with me late last year. I was hugely flattered and very proud to have been invited, but I was quite nervous about listening, it, listening to it back. So thank you for those who gave me feedback and said they enjoyed it. Anyway, going back to Thursday and what happened um, at Rainbow, and I'm gonna start with Nero, if that's okay. Now, for anybody who's joining us tonight, who's perhaps new to the channel, I'm going to give you a quick background on our little Rainbow Boy. He arrived with us in November, with a rainbow glowing over the farm as the horse box arrived. His owners had found that he'd got a very badly damaged hock that meant that he was unlikely to be able to work in the traditional sense, and they felt that their only option was to have him put to sleep. We offered him a lifeline here at the sanctuary because at just five years old, he deserved a chance and because having dealt with a number of horses over the years with health challenges, we believed that with the followers that, that we could help him. Now, as we're at capacity, which a lot of you will already know, the original plan was to get his pain management under control and then place him in foster care. But as we all know, plans do like to change, especially here. Now, without going into the full story, as I'm very conscious of time and the fact that we have this very important raffle to draw, plus I need to update you most importantly on Bear. Um, with Nero, although we managed his pain when he first arrived with um, some steroid injections, it soon became very clear that we needed to take more drastic action to help him in the long term. So on Thursday, he underwent sur so on Thursday he underwent surgery and going to need to possible he should be pain so to leave the photos for me. The surgery went really well. He was a little, little lively in recovery, um, but fortunately he came through um, without any problems. So I'm entertained. Okay. There. Um, what I will start with saying is that in nearly two decades of living with Frisians, I've dealt with a number of health issues, some specific to the breed, uh, others more general and fairly common in a number of different breeds. Since the early days, I've always been aware of the small people and the genetic issues that have affected the breed over the, over the years. Now, I've not been involved in breeding for quite a while, and it's not an area that I really want to talk about today, or even try to claim extensive knowledge, because as I say, I've not done it for some time. What I do know is that when I first got involved in the breed, I was slightly horrified by the reluctance of many breeders and owners to be open and honest about issues that were affecting the horses in their care. It seemed to me that there was a great secrecy about the reasons a horse may have died suddenly or died at a young age. This always baffled me because I'm all about openness and honesty because that can only lead to greater understanding and progress. Now obviously this was a long time ago um, when I first got involved and I believe in, in lots of areas this has improved. But like I say, you know, it, it's not something I get involved in these days. Um, you know, I try and focus my time on understanding and caring for those horses that are already here. So, of course, in that time, as I say, I've dealt with a number of 
now commonly known conditions that can affect the Frisian horse, many of which are a result of a connective tissue disorder from gastroparesis, gastric rupture, megaesophagus, aortic rupture, to, to name just a few. Now, in many breeds, issues are not highlighted, they're not researched or reported, but how fortunate are we and the Frisian horse that there's so many people out there that are so passionate about them that they find ways to carry out research into eliminating all these conditions. The Fenway Foundation, who I mentioned earlier, have been an absolute driving force behind all of the research. They've produced papers, they've done studies, they share all this with owners, and what they've done is absolutely priceless and should never be taken for granted. I've been conscious for a number of years that one of the conditions seen in a number of Frisians, but not specific to Frisians, is degenerative suspensory ligament disease. I'm quite impressed I said that. Now, I've been, in, I've been fortunate that I've never had to deal with this and I've kind of put my head in the sand and not looked into it because I can be a bit blinkered with things like this until I need to open my eyes and, and look a little further. So, before I get emotional again, as that's not good for anyone, I'm going to do my best to summarise um, Rainbow's findings with Bear. You've got a little idea now. And again, I'm going to put together a video to explain in more detail with what Jonathan Dixon has, has shared with me. Jonathan is Rainbow's imaging specialist, and it's fair to say that Bear gave him and his colleagues an awful lot to think about and analyse over the last few days. Um, I spent an hour on the phone to him yesterday, and bearing in mind, excuse the pun, that Bear was so lame on his left hind, where he was on medication, he would, he would hold it in the air to avoid having to, to put weight on it. And because he wasn't improving, that's why we got Sam to do the exercise, and that's where we saw these abnormal and unusual changes in his, his long and short past and bones. Um, because of this, we needed more detailed imaging with CT scans, surrounding it. These images themselves highlighted a lot of unusual activity, but what happened the day after these scans took place gave the team at Rainbow another reason to evaluate exactly what was going on. Now, the plan was to carry out further exams on his left hind leg and nerve blocks because that's the one he was so uncomfortable on. However, when he came out, he was significantly more lame on the So, here's the bones red herring. The concern has been that both of his fetlocks are sinking. In his left hind, he has bone loss at the top of his long past and bone at the back of the fetlock. The suspensory ligaments in both of his hind legs are far too stretchy. They should be nice and tight to support his fetlocks, but they're not. Now, before this, we'd all been thinking that surgery was going to be an option to help stabilize far more complicated neuros of movement in that joint. But because he's lame in both, they couldn't both be done at the same time. One would have to be done. He would need six to 12 months to recover before the other could be done. And the potential additional damage that that would be causing to the right hind leg while he recovered from that surgery could be absolutely catastrophic. So certainly at this stage, it wouldn't be kind or fair for us to put him through this. Now, as I understand, horses with degenerative suspensory ligament disease, 
have an abnormal healing response. And the damaged tissue heals with cartilage instead of collagen and can't restore itself to normal strength. Now, what this means is that as the, di the disease progresses, these damaged tissues continue to break down even further just with the strain of normal function. There is no cure for this, and there's only management, and that's what we now need to do. Jonathan said to me, there's three things that we can do to start with, um, all very doable. Special shoes that Chris Alfaria will be able to make to offer support to his fetlock joints. He had yesterday injections of a gel called Arthromid into both his fetlock joints, so that in itself is going to help. And he had the first round of shockwave therapy yesterday, and I will just need to find somewhere local where he can have three more treatments of this um, at two weekly intervals. In many situations like this, as a horse is unlikely to be able to work in the traditional sense, again, they would be put to sleep. And if over the next few months it's clear that we're, going, we're not going to be able to manage Bear's discomfort and give him the chance to lead a comfortable life, we too will have to make that heartbreaking decision to do the right thing for him. But we're not at that point yet, I hasten to to, to say. What works in Bear's favour is that he's a quiet, gentle little soul who in all honesty has absolutely adored his box rest. He's never been the sort of horse who wants to go running around the fields and he's extremely conscientious and unlike some of our others is quite happy to be a, a lad of leisure. You know, he doesn't need his brain to be stimulated with lots of activity. He just wants to be cuddled and adored. Now, quality of life is our biggest priority with all our horses. And what we do and what we offer here will always be governed by the horses. The chances are that Bear will not be able to spend all his time out in the big fields with all the other boys and girls on the undulating fields that we have. Will he be bothered by that? No, I really don't, none of us really think he will. Will he need to spend all his time in a stable? As that's not the quality of life that we want any horses to endure. As initially, he is going to be kept in and a small turnout on the flat area just so that we can see how he manages. Once he's completed the shockwave therapy, and if he's showing that he's comfortable enough at walk, as I believe he was showing he was, he'll be just happy to and continue to enjoy his life. It's heartbreaking to know that there's no cure, and it's heartbreaking to think that he can't have a life where he could be ridden or driven. Again, does he care that he can't do those things? No, probably not. You know, that's something I'm sad about. But what he gives back to us, simply with his presence and his kindness, is more than enough. He's already a hugely popular companion in our friendship barn, and over time, who knows, we may even see him take in stable stays. You know, only, only time is going to tell. So my plan is Bailey and I are going to scoot across to Yorkshire tomorrow and pick the boys up and bring them home. And as I say, you know, we'll, we'll look to manage both of them. You know, they're very different characters. Um, Bear, I know, will find the rest very easy, as I've said. Uh, Nero will find it a little more challenging. So that's really where we are. 
Um, that is a very brief summary of the situation with Bear. As I've said, I'm going to put together a YouTube video with all the videos and the images that Jonathan has shared with me, which I found very, very confusing to start with, but I'm hoping that I've found a way to try and explain them to, to you all in a, in a logical sense. Do you understand any of that? I think. A little bit, eh? A little bit. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the not so good, from the not so good news to the very good news Hooray. because this wonderful quilt, as I say, that was. Oh, oh, no, we have got good news. I was worried my computer died earlier um, and I thought we weren't going to be able to get the random .org system up on here, which we need to pick who's going to be the winner of this beautiful quilt. I'm very lucky I had the first of the quilts that Diane kindly made for us here. And absolutely a beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's of Anya and I wish I could show you a picture on here, but it's a little bit difficult for me to do that. Um, absolutely stunning. So whoever wins this is incredibly lucky. We've had an overwhelming response to this, and I have to say um, that it's raised just over £700, which will all go towards the care of the boys and girls, specifically, obviously, Bear. Um, we've had a massive entry, so, you know, a huge thank you to everybody who's bought tickets. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to get the number of entries on the screen here that you can't see. And Bailey, you can tell, you, you can read out the... Okay. Okay, so, so we... Yeah, but put in 147. Okay. 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 So Bailey's put the numbers in. He's going to press the generate button and it will give us a number. Three, two, two one. one. 92. 92. So if you go onto the spreadsheet. Okay, now don't read out the second name. So who is the very, now you can go the first name and the initial of the second name. Could we do that? Username. Okay, no, 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 no. Just go with who's the lucky winner? Ruth B. Ruth B. So I will because then have we got more Ruth Bs? We may have a few Ruth Bs. I think there's only one. Um, I will drop you a line later tonight if you heard that um, beyond um, Hunnis's snorting, um, and we will get this across to you as soon as we can. It will go in the post on Monday. Um, so huge congratulations. And again, you know, thank you to everybody who, who entered the draw. You know, I've got so many thank yous to make and, and I really couldn't possibly name everybody. And at the risk of being repetitive, we really couldn't do any of this and give the horses this care if it wasn't for all of you. I would like to, before I go on to the questions, I would like to just mention a few names of those who we can really call our guardian angels. Lindsay Furness, Tara Cohn, Karen Vinton Hughes, and of course our anonymous donor, who have been specifically amazing guardian angels. Now, as I say, thanks to every single one of you. Everything that you do, whether it's a like, a subscription, a share, a comment, a donation, all of that we are so grateful for. And because of all of that, we've been able to put Nero through his Hock Fusion. We've been able to get the CT and MRI scan, the additional analysis, plus the first round of Bear's treatment covered by yourselves. As I said to you on my previous live, and I, I really apologise because there's loads of questions coming up here that I need to get on to. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, yeah, well, 
as I say, we, we couldn't do it without you. No, sorry, that's where I was going. As I said on my last slide, it's been a long week, you know. Yeah. It's been a very long week. Um, if we got to the target for what we needed to raise for Nero's surgery and Bear's initial analysis, then I would give my word that we would do everything we possibly can to give Nero a home here for life, which I know means so much to so many of you. It wasn't a decision I took lightly um, because, as you know, we don't have the facilities, but thanks to Tara, we're going to have those dreams put on paper so that we can then try and get them created here. Um, I'm going to just head on to the computer now and see some of the questions. And perhaps, Bailey, do you want to go in and maybe take the camera into Hunnis um, while I have a look at some of the questions? Do you want me to? I should also say that the camera that we're using tonight um, is thanks to our anonymous donor who we've got the new GoPro 12, which Yay. is what filming from today and that's going to enable us to um, do more live streaming action with the horse horses maybe wandering around the yard if you didn't see the youtube video of annie and jb wearing our old gopro uh, then do take a look on on the youtube page um, and hopefully we'll be able to live stream some of that we're also looking, thanks to Lindsay, at having other cameras situated uh, around the farm, uh, but that's something I haven't had a chance to, to look into yet. Anyway, I'm going to go to the questions. Right, Bailey, do you think you can manage the camera if I give it to you? Probably not, but I'll try. I think you can try. Okay. So, do you want to take it through? I'll take the wires out. And maybe just stop this side and just just show everyone Hannes who's busy munching at the back there so you can go a little bit that's it just keep an eye on the, on the camera and let me go to just just let me know if you can't hear me um i'm going to start from the bottom up which is probably a little bit unfair uh, Katie, Tracy, I hope you will be repetitive on everything you said up to the time you started to talk about the quilt. You were breaking up the entire time. We'd catch a word or two and then silence. Well, that's not good. That's very not good. Oh dear. Hmm. I'm very sorry about that. Back to the um, problem. Right, but this is the problem with me not looking at it while we're going. Um, Okay. Right, so if if there's a lot of breakup. Right, what I will do, um bring bring it back over. Okay. I can't see what's happening. This okay. screen turned no, off. You were, you were I, I, was, I was watching through that. That's fine. What I will do, um, that's fine, that doesn't need to be plugged in. Yeah, but we don't want to go down. No, that's fine. What I will do, because uh, this has recorded on the GoPro and hopefully the sound will have come out, what I'll do is I'll download this and I will repost it on our YouTube channel so that you can hear everything that I was saying. Um, so I'm really sorry that you've lost the sound because, um, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. I did test it earlier and it seemed to be working, but this is the joy of technology. In the hope that you can hear me a little bit now, um, I'll just say a few hellos, Lisa, Maria, Nakota, Katie, Jules, um, Karen, Linda. I'm so sorry that you couldn't hear them. Right, I tell you what, I'm gonna end this live now. Um, 
Huge apologies. As I said, it's recorded and I will get it uploaded so that it's, it's just a standard video on YouTube. But thank you for joining me. Thank you for putting up with the um, erratic um, connection. And I will bring you more soon. So thank you and good night. Good night.